Hello, homeschool friends. Welcome to the land of Kek Yak. My name is Laurel. Today's video is a product introduction. I'm going to show you my unofficial RC notebook, level six. If you have not seen me show these before, I will link to some of my previous videos where I have done like planning and other levels and things. Um, so this, I anticipate this could be my, the final one. This is pretty RC pure here. And, um, unless I decide to do one that just has like more pages in it or something. Um, do you want to see what's inside? Okay, let's look. Okay, so this is the notebook. Of course, I've just bound it myself at home. There is an Amazon version. The Etsy version, uh, the printable version, comes also with a bonus file for um, a lab report, like a write-up. I made these when Everett was doing his labs for the Apologia um, General Science this year. It was just easier for me to have a bunch of these printed off for him to just to grab and to fill out um, while he was doing his labs. It was easier than having him actually using the notebook that um, I bought to go with the course. So they just write in their experiment title, their date, researcher, that's them, right? <laughs> Uh, the question or the purpose, right, of the experiment, any background research notes, what their hypothesis is, the materials they'll need, their procedure, any notes or data sets that they end up taking, like if they were going to do a chart or something or record something, and then they can write up their conclusion, mm -hmm. and if they have any illustrations or infographics, you know, this is that space. Uh, I would usually just have him draw his... He would draw his experiment and in here as well. So he used those a couple times. So anyways, this file is in the included with the Etsy version of this. Okay, so what's in the notebook? Let's just do a quick flip through. Okay, this book belongs to just a page for notes or writing and probably going to keep track of what books he's covered in this notebook and stuff like that. Oh, for, I don't know, just in case you're not familiar with RC, that stands for Robinson curriculum. And it is a very highly independent um, methodology. So these notebooks have helped her move my kids towards this final notebook. Um, that is more of the RC peer method. And see, I just designed and printed it out for Everett. And he is, he's currently in seventh grade. This is, you know, the end of March of his seventh grade year. I probably could have started him into this one, you know, in seventh grade. I just wasn't ready. I just didn't have it ready. <laughs> so he's been using, the last one was, he's used my everything notebook once this year. He's used um, level five of this series for me. He's really my guinea pig. He test drive all my stuff, right? Actually, right now he's been using my McGuffey revised reader uh, companion notebook for the fourth reader. And he's really enjoying that for his writing. And he's actually liking it so much. This is a dilemma. Tell me what you think. I've been having him doing writing and rhetoric for his like writing portion. And he likes writing and rhetoric. And But I wanted him to to pause it and to to like test drive the... McGuffey companion notebook for me. Oh my gosh. I asked him, okay, when you start your new notebook, do you want to go back to writing and rhetoric or which one do you like better writing and rhetoric or the McGuffey um, reader with the companion notebook for writing? He said he liked the McGuffey reader with the companion notebook for writing more. And I was actually completely shocked. I did not think he was going to say that. And now I'm like, well, what am I going to do? He said he likes that writing better. And I already bought you guys all the writing and rhetoric books, like literally the entire series because he liked it. And so I was like, I'll just get it now and I'll just have it because I'm a psycho like that. And I just buy everything up front <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, I spent all that money. Um, so I don't know because we're year round homeschoolers. I, I always kind of feel like, well, we can probably, we have more time than writing and rhetoric. It won't take us you know, 12 months or whatever, I could have him do like a unit of writing and rhetoric and then McGuffey writing for, I could switch back and forth or I could do writing and rhetoric over the summer and have his normal like 
nine months of the year be his McGuffey reader writing? I don't know. This is what happens when you have like too many good resources. I think he said that's what he likes better. I should go with what he likes to do because we want school to be not a drag. Anyway, sorry, that's just a personal dilemma I'm having right now. But whatever his writing was, <laughs> let's say it was writing in rhetoric or maybe um, the companion notebook, whatever my resource was, I would write that there for his, you know, composition curriculum and whatever books he's reading off the book list. So um, the Robinson curriculum is known for his book list because it, the book list basically is just numbered. You just go, they just read the next book, read the next book, read the next book, and it's going to cover all their subjects. So I would probably just make some rows and as he finishes certain books for whatever category it falls in, I'm probably just going to record it in here as we go. I'm sure I'll, I'll sit down and do like a whole planning video when I get to planning his eighth grade curriculum. It kind of goes over that. Okay, so um, in accordance with uh, Dr. Robinson's suggestion of doing math first, I start with math, right, lesson. So I just have a two-page graph spread and... Um, we use Right Start Math, so he, he can just do his work in here. RC, they suggest Saxon, but really, like, just whatever math works for your kid is fine. Don't feel like they must do Saxon. It's not the end of the world, right? And, all right, this is for that RC book. Now, you could use this journal or this notebook with any book list, really, you know. Um, I also, like, add in and trade out books here and there. So this is labeled book notes and journal. Of course, they're gonna date it. They can just write whatever book they are reading and they can record um, what page to what page they read and like what, maybe if you want them to write what subject, you know, it's, go, it's falling under. And then I tried to set this up in the Cornell style of, of note taking. So you have these lines here on the side. So you write down important names dates, titles, like whatever. And then you write more explanation out here to the right. And then at the end, you're supposed to summarize. I said summar summary slash visuals, because a lot of times we do like a little summary, but then I've, as I've shown in like lots of our notebooking videos before, we like to, they can draw or we print things out, you know, or take copies of stuff. And we like to put visuals in here too, to really give the note taking like maximum you know, impact for them, for their memories and stuff and their understanding. So I'll link, I'll link a couple notebooking videos in the description box. You kind of see some other, some examples of that. We've done different notebooks. So let's say they were reading, I mean, it could be, it's going to be like science, history, or literature mostly, right? And you just do one, one subject at a time, except for, of course, you're always doing like math and writing, but, but as far as the books go, just one subject at a time. Okay, vocabulary. So because RC has its own vocabulary words for every single book, I have been, up until this point, we've been doing some different things for vocabulary, um, mostly because I just wanted them to understand like origins of words and affixes and stuff like that and kind of understand our language a little bit more. Um, I'm ready though for him to full on use the Robinson curriculum vocabulary that comes with every book. I think you've probably seen my, if, I'll try to link if I'll find it, my video on the bookmarks I made. And I didn't make them for all of them, but for a bunch of the books I made bookmarks. It just got, it was so time consuming. I just <laughs> kind of like stopped doing it for a while. Uh, although I do have, I did make some bookmarks. Um, I'm gonna share them with you guys. I made some just like blank ones. I think this says uh, like this so I just print this on cardstock so I can cut these bookmarks out and just have a bunch of blank ones on hand and we can just write the title and then write the reading word you know and the definition like a short definition and then here's some a different size just for um maybe some of the earlier books are for littler kids but I thought it's a good exercise to have him have to write down his own definitions anyways like that's a good <laughs> That's a good like first vocabulary assignment when you start a book or he could just be adding to it as he works each. He's going to do three words a day in here. I'm going to show you what I was, I'm going to have him do. So RC comes with a bunch of 
vocabulary activities. They have like all these um, word search and match it. The matching ones are probably my favorite. I think they work really well if you print them out to use them as a test, if you like to test. I actually just decided I'm not going to test. It's just whatever sticks, sticks, and I'm not going to stress out about it anymore. Yeah, I just need to pick my battles and I need to um, reduce as much friction as I can, like as long as they're understanding the book. And I'm just not going to stress out about if every single word is memorized or not. Um, anyways, that's just me. I've just decided not to grade um, vocabulary tests or whatever. So this is what the flashcards look like. Here's a stack. So you'll have a book and you'll have a stack of, you can get us in these, you can find these print and printable version. I just bought a used set off of eBay actually. Um, so they'll have like fulminate will be the vocabulary word and it means shout or thunder forth denunciation. And then you see this, like you'll have a sentence here, an example sentence, wherever it says dot, 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 that is where the word the vocab word would fit in and it's not always necessarily this form of the word so all this one it does so fulminate though he would the chairman would not let him have his way okay so what we're gonna do is whatever he's gonna pick three words i made another video about if you're if you trade out a book and you still want to have a vocab list for it but you know it's not on the rc you know vocabulary obviously because it's some different book um, I made a video a while back about making your own vocabulary list for like a subbed out book and bookmark and stuff. And I'll, I'll link it for you in the description box too. Okay. So there they can do it. He can just write it and keep this in his reading book. But like as he went, so say vocab day one, say he's starting a new book and he can have his list. He can just pick like the first three words, right? Let's say it's fulminate for fewer, sorry, and gargoyles. He's going to write the word. He's going to write the definition of the word, right? And the word parts. So that's stuff like, um, like eight is a suffix, right? We're going to say, where does that come from? So I want, basically, this is going to be kind of like a little etymology section. And in the definition, I would have them say what part of speech it is as well and um word parts or you could you could include things like you know language of origin in there so he's still going to be going to his etymology dictionary uh we have a physical one um although we do i do often find myself personally because i his it's over there by his uh, desk so i find myself just going to um it's edimonline.com and that's a good online etymology dictionary to look at too. Okay, so they've done their research on three words. This is good. He's going to do this directly after he reads his book, right? And so this, this is a vocabulary that's going along with that book. Um, so then the example sentences says, write sentences and practice reading them aloud. Try to commit to memory. I don't know about you. I don't remember definitions, but I remember words in sentences much better. It's kind of like a story, you know, <laughs> like you remember, you don't memorize history facts as much as you remember a story you read or a movie you watched on a historical event. I don't know. I think that's like in that same vein. And there is a method that I like that I learned um, from Don Potter's book. Uh, Everett's using it right now for his vocabulary. What's this thing called? Let me grab it. Okay, so it is Beyond Blend Phonics. And what Don says to do is, so um, they give a word. And this one, they, they're learning about um, affixes and root words and stuff like that. But um, they give, let's say it's senseless. Jim fell off his horse and was knocked senseless when his head hit the ground. He woke up later and was fine when his senses came back. So this is called parallel sentences. So it's one sentence that contains the word itself, the, the vocabulary word, and the second sentence explains the meaning of the word basically in it. 
useless. Harry was useless at football. He could not run, throw, tackle, or catch. It was no use to even try. He played basketball instead. That was like four sentences, but it doesn't take up very much, very many lines. They were short. So he um, is supposed to try to write some parallel sentences or at least a sentence that he could easily, would help him easily remember the meaning. But I think parallel sentences is more effective and it makes them think for a second about how they can write that parallel sentence. And they have to really think about the meaning of the word and how the word is used and stuff. So, and that's something that's easy for me to, you know, check. So anyways, he just has to do three a day. You know, if it's like a slow day and he does one, whatever, but up to three, right? And then he can be, he can record, maybe start off you know, the first day that he starts a book, maybe he makes his, if it's not one that I don't already have a pre-made bookmark for him that has all the words with the definitions, then maybe he just handwrites, makes his own. Or if he wants to type it up and make it on the computer, I don't mind either. Okay, so for RC, right, they do their math, they read their book, they do their vocabulary work, and then they are supposed to write a daily essay. So I just... Um, Dr. You know, Fred Ray Lybrand, he, his kids, I believe they were all RC homeschooled as well. Him and his wife homeschooled their children. And he is an author himself and stuff. And he, um, he's the author of um, The Writing Course. If you're familiar with Robinson Curriculum, you might be familiar with The Writing, called, it's called The Writing Course by Dr. Lybrand. But I just saw him recently, people were talking on one of uh, the Facebook groups about writing and essay writing and he shared I think a little article or blog post that he'd written about like consider you know waiting delaying essay writing until like 14 and I'm I'm like I, I'm on board with that <laughs> so I believe the RC guidance was like copy work until 10 and then essay writing after that it's just um and there is an article they give on essay writing but, um, you know, kids take, it just takes a lot of practice to be good at writing, like a lot, a lot of practice, which is why you'll see in my, in the younger years, if you've seen those other notebooks, I talk about, I start my kids in gentle grammar. We do some sentence scaffolds. We do do copy work, of course, first, but then we do sentence scaffolds and we do gentle grammar. And, um, we just do a lot of work to get them up to, even just to be able to write a good paragraph right? So don't feel like just because it says essay that you have to write like a five paragraph essay or something, you know, this can be a story, this can be a poem, this can be uh, explanatory, it can be persuasive, it can be a narrative, right? Like, it can be whatever they want you, you want them to, however you want them to write. I'm, this isn't telling you what to do, like, specifically, it's not a writing program, right? So feel free to have them do whatever writing you want them to do. So this, what the notebook gives you is a brainstorming page. You know, they may want to doodle, they want to draw, they may want to make a, an idea web. There's lots of stuff out there that you can do to warm up stuff, right? And then once it gets their ideas kind of sorted out, you might want to, you know, set a timer on that. So you've got 15 minutes to brainstorm and then just get started you know, just get going. And then they, I give them two pages. So here's for them to write their title. And the, you also may want them to record what kind of, you may be like trying to hit specific types. You may be using some kind of resource, like, you know, kind of writing notebooks and things that you're having them follow along, but you're having them do the writing in here. So it's all kept together. Um, and you don't have to like keep consuming workbooks, <laughs> but you might, yes, you might want to say they, they have a prompt they're responding to. Maybe they're writing based something uh, of response to something that they read, um, whatever. But here's two pages for that. And then, of course, you just give them your feedback. I'm not opposed to them working on the same essay all week, you know, so they can have a brainstorm page. Then they can, um, I don't care if they brainstorm a whole day. They can use all these pages for brainstorm or, you know, for just get the first paragraph down or brainstorming a topic, you know, sentence, um, brainstorming a conclusion, like whatever. I don't, I don't mind 
it doesn't have to be a full a different essay every single day for me like as as long as they're writing every day and they're thinking and they're improving and we do end up with an essay at the end it'd be nice to have one once a week it just seems like a nice flow or something you know it might be nice once a month if there's one that they like type up practice those typing skills practice those computer skills stuff like that but they but you know there's nothing to, to me nothing beats pencil to paper to just get your ideas out and you know you can be as messy as you want scribble it out whatever it's not if it's not the final draft and then you're done for the day and it's just next day's math we put the bookmark and then we're done. So that's it. It's math. This every day. It's math. Read your book. Take your notes. Summarize. Put down some visuals if you want. Work some vocabulary words. Work on your daily or weekly essay. Maybe even daily or weekly paragraph. Whatever level you're on. Get your feedback, decide what you're going to focus on improving next time, and you're done for the day. I mean, it just doesn't get any simpler than that. And then just record as you go that you can have them just jotting down, you know, what they finish and what they're, you can write down a couple things, like what a couple books ahead so they just know what to grab off the shelf next or whatever. So, and of course, like I said, you get, with the printable version, the Etsy version, you get this blank lab report. And I'm going to throw this, um, my bookmarks into these blank bookmarks into, um, onto my Google Drive. And I'll share that in the description box for you also. All right. Happy homeschooling. Bye.